quickly. I think one third of uh, the video will be animations, and I will show you some of this. And this DVD, I want to <coughs> finish by January 2007 because there is a major event, and we want then um, show this and, and distribute also. And the <coughs> other project I want to show, this ha has been finalized already, is a video tutorial. This was made also within the frame of a European research project uh, where we have a um, <coughs> project to demonstrate methods for monitoring tidal flats. And one of these methods is uh, I made a tutorial how to use this um, by using Blender. <coughs> so these are the two projects just to where, who and where I am. I'm <coughs> working in the field of uh, remote sensing, optical remote sensing, in a larger research center close to Hamburg in Germany. And in my group, we are doing marine optics, developing optical instruments, algorithms to process satellite data. And in the past, the main project we are working on was the MERIS, an instrument which is on the environmental satellite NVZ, which is an ESA, the biggest ESA satellite ever in space. And we have developed algorithms for these special instruments and uh, did also a lot of optical work. <coughs> All the video making and 3D animation, it's a hobby. So other do painting or playing music. And I use my free time by playing with Blender and, and then try to utilize this uh, also in my work, but it's not the, the, the prime work, of course. <laughs> so the Science of Ocean Color project, <coughs> it's in the IOCCG, which is the International uh, Coordination Group for these satellite programs, <coughs> and partners of these are, for instance, NASA, ESA, and other space organizations uh, worldwide. And we meet uh, two times a year in working groups and also coordinating groups. And what we need is uh, some tut tutorials and also promotional material to show others how all these techniques work and what one can do with this in, in applications. And this is uh, the basic uh, reason for, the, for preparing this DVD. So the content will be um, animations uh, of process, optical processes, animations of instruments, how they work, and I will show some, some examples. But as I mentioned already, most of this will be also real videos. And I have put this all together already, but need still some, some of the animations, or I have to improve some of the animations. So this is these, this project with the Maris <coughs> on the NVZ. Uh, this is an optical instrument, an imaging spectrometer, which measures the ocean surface in different um, wave bands. And from these wave bands, then we can derive properties of the ocean. You see here some images, which will then also appear when this is the north coast of Norway. And you see here plankton blooms, uh, <coughs> which have uh, the so-called um, uh, coccolithophorites, which have a, a, has a calcite shell. <coughs> so they make the water really bright and, and have a special optical properties, which one can measure. This is just one example of the global distribution of phytoplankton in the ocean. Here is chlorophyll milligrams per cubic meter expressed. This can be measured from these satellites. and. We get, if there are no clouds, we get a global coverage every three days <coughs> from these satellites. So to study also the dynamics. Just this as a background. I try now to show you just the introduction, which is real video. <coughs> Let's see if this works. Let's see. Don't know if the sound works. So this will be the introduction of the video with, with reels. Uh, <coughs> I made a prototype already for, for showing to the people uh, if they would accept this. And uh, well, they were just fun of this. And I like also the, these animation stuff, the blue ocean. Well, I will stop this here. The color of the sea has attracted poets and songwriters slide. <coughs> now what, what we want to explain here are, are the processes. You can see in, in the animation like the light is coming down from the, from the sun penetrating into the ocean, a speck scattered then again. And there are different paths that part of the light is uh, reflected at the sea surface 
at the bottom and also in <coughs> which is in the major source in the atmosphere because the atmosphere is the biggest reflector above the ocean. The ocean is really dark, only 1% of the light comes out of the ocean which is going in, so a very dark surface. And uh <coughs> there are mainly two processes, one is absorption and scattering, these two work together and it depends then on, on the absorption and scattering how much light comes out of the ocean. And, and this should be also an animation, I think. Oh, I, go back. I have now <coughs> just tried to simulate here what happens in, in absorption. Uh, you see now particles in the ocean <coughs> and the photons flying in. Um, you see mainly uh, two processes, so I will repeat this. Um, that the photons are absorbed, converted into heat, for instance, by water molecules. And this was these, uh, you see here, now this is a big, a big particle. <coughs> you see now here, this, this one here was just red, should demonstrate its heating. Maybe it's too fast in the final version, so I have to, uh, to slow down. And then also <coughs> the phytoplankton, this should be a phytoplankton cell here. If the photons hit these, part of the light <coughs> which is absorbed by the phytoplankton is then re-emitted in form of fluorescence in the red light. And, and to demonstrate this fluorescence, uh, I'm, I'm using this animation here. <coughs> okay. The other then is scattering. <coughs> that means uh, photons are scattered at particles in different directions. You see that the photons are flying, hitting, and all the backscattered photons then are, of course, so these photons we can capture from a satellite again, and, but it's only a very small um, part, <coughs> part of this. Um, it happens also multiple scattering, that means photons are scattered at one particle, then they fly to the next one and have an <coughs> event, a scattering event with the next particle, and this makes the whole process I in the simulation for developing algorithms very complicated. And for, for the scientific application, we mainly use uh, Monte Carlo simulation of photon tracing to calculate how much light comes out of the water, and this is then the basic also for, for developing the algorithms. <coughs> Now the, the, <coughs> the scattering is not equal. You see here two uh, scattering function. If the particles in the water are very small, like the vo water molecules itself, then you have a, a scattering function, which is here on, this, on the upper left panel. That's my, um, you see here this is zero degree and this is 180 degree. So in the forward and backward, <coughs> um, you have uh, different intensities in the scattering, but symmetrically, symmetrically around the, the uh, sphere. In the other case, <coughs> if the particles are very large, then most of the particle of the most of the photons are scattered in the forward direction. I, and, and I wanted to simulate this with, with uh, um, using Blender. <coughs> and for this, I wrote a little a Python script here to use these. Um, Face what are called phase functions, which describes the these scattering in, in uh, <coughs> all directions, um, which are partly, you can express this by mathematical function, partly you, it's based on measurements. And then you can modify just the sphere. <coughs> you, you first define a sphere and modify the sphere, the, the vertices, uh, by this little script here. And then you get the, the, the real shape of this function um, which I show here. Um, so this would be then <coughs> on the right side a sphere showing the um, Rayleigh, the so-called Rayleigh scattering at small particles. Um, you see here in the forward direction, this would be here the forward direction. So the light comes from here, hits a particle, and these <coughs> uh, body then describes how much light is scattered in, into different direction, which in this case is symmetrically, <coughs> and um, which I have now shown here as sh just as an image, but I think this is a simulation also. Yeah. Well, this 
is just showing the, di the different phases. <coughs> and then I have here also how the, <coughs> the photons which come in uh, are scattered into different direction. In order to simulate this, um, I had a little sphere inside this body, <coughs> and by just weight painting the sphere, um, <coughs> I simulated uh, the, uh, for the particle emitter and blender uh, different intensities into different directions, uh, which can be seen also here. This is the Rayleigh scattering. You see the photons are coming in and then flying in, into these different directions. And this was done then by this white painting around the sphere. Um, I, I, this was handmade, this, this white painting, because I was not able to find how to, to write this in a script. I would prefer to, to do it with a script. I tried this, but um, then I gave up and, and did this just by hand. Yeah. yeah. And in the other case, if you have larger particles, like in this one, then you have this very strong forward scattering and only a small fraction is backscattered. And this is the main reason why the ocean is, is blue because uh, the, the small particles are all the water molecules. They give the strongest backscattering with, with increase to the blue part, while all the particles, the, the main scattering is in the forward direction, as you will see and this animation here. Now the photons coming now to these larger particles and only a small fraction is then backscattered and, and most of the particles, or the, the photons in this case, are scattered in the forward direction. <coughs> and, but also, of course, part of the beam is not scattered. It just flies as without any scattering. Now the other <coughs> thing I tried to do is uh, to demonstrate how light is penetrating in the sea and that the, <coughs> the, up the optical properties of the sea means of the pure water that most of the red light, <coughs> the, the red spectrum, is absorbed in the upper surface. As you know from if you go diving, then the red color disappears the first and, and the blue <coughs> at the last one. And I tried to simulate this with, with this one, just go with the camera. These are the photons flying into the sea, and then <coughs> by this particle emitter, you can control how long the, the lifetime of the particles, that means the length, <coughs> and this would be then different from, from red to green and blue particles. So I dive now with the camera into the, it's not very sharp here on this screen, and then you see that the red disappear first and then finally only the, the blue photons and by the lead then in the final version some explanation. So, okay. Just repeat this. <coughs> uh, it's not not so good uh, rendered, no? Let's see. Oh. I haven't seen it on the screen so far. <coughs> well, <coughs> I try to improve also these water surfaces and the, uh, these um, tutorials by Colin Litzer, I, mean, I think he is also here during this meeting, uh, <coughs> is very uh, valuable and I made all, started already to replace all this animation with the water surface uh, by his suggestions he made also to to get a better impression of the decreasing size of the wave to the horizon. Uh, I did some modifications for this in order to dive also with a camera and then have an underwater scene <coughs> as I did it before. Okay, there are also instruments, uh, simulations li like this instrument and this is underwater. I showed this last time already, these, these probes and instruments and how they work underwater. Now <coughs> to the other uh, project I, I, I finished, this was within the so-called HIMOM, Hierarchical Monitoring Project, EU-funded, European-funded in the fifth framework. And this was an international project for different tidal flat areas in Europe. <coughs> 
and we had to develop techniques to do the monitoring. Uh, then description of the um, of the different techniques, and also had to prepare tutorials. And we tried this by using real videos, how different instruments are used, but also uh, with the, um, animations. And I prepared one of these animations uh, by using Blender. The task was to describe how this instrument works, which is a really simple instrument, which is used to take samples of the <coughs> of the uh, sediment um, an undisturbed sample in the sediment and to freeze this sample because later on these samples are sliced with a tens of micrometer to study how the different fight uh, the different uh, diatoms you see here on the right side very small algae uh, monocell algae which live on this on within the first millimeter and they have an important um, ecological uh, impor importance and um, for remote sensing it's important to know in which layer they are because if they are hit hidden behind the the grains <coughs> then you wouldn't see it from above and they do some migrations uh, diurnal migrations and we want to study this so this <coughs> little tube here is used for freezing the, um, the, the little piece of the surface without disturbing it with liquid nitrogen if you would pour liquid nitrogen on the surface directly, you would destroy the upper millimeter or upper two millimeters of, of, of the sediment, and then you wouldn't get a, a good vertical, vertical structure. And uh, this is why a colleague <coughs> uh, designed this little tube, um, and we wanted to just explain how this tube would work. Uh, you see here the tube on the, on the tidal flats. Sometimes tidal flats are really covered by by these diatoms, which uh, do a lot of production, primary production, and makes these uh, tidal, flats, tidal flats very important for migrating birds and, and other <coughs> organisms. This is now a little real video showing the operation of this. And then I go to the animations. You see here the people working in the tidal flat. It's really dirty work. And we have now this little little tube there and uh, a container with liquid nitrogen and this nitrogen is now put on this tube to freeze the sediment and then later this tube is <coughs> taken out to get this core of, of sediment out. There's another design of this tube for, for other purpose. But for this vertical slicing, we need these, uh, this first tube, which has been used. Hmm? Yeah, Mahanit. Yeah. Mm, very cool. So now this is the, the setup. Uh, <coughs> so I simulated all these different uh, tools in, in Blender, a bottle with the liquid nitrogen, and the tube itself, and also the other tools, which is an instrument to, to push later on the, the core out of this, and then also an, an environment, as you will see later in the, in the final movie. <coughs> um, this is now the representation, <coughs> the first shot then of the cryolander, the tube with these um, gauze or the cotton wool wi which goes in, li liquid nitrogen, plunger, and, and so on. <coughs> so all modeled with, with Blender. Uh, what was a little bit difficult was to, uh, I don't know if you can see it from here really, no, it looks strange, <coughs> um, was the simulation of the liquid, the, the steam of the liquid nitrogen when it came out of the bottle because it leaks always. And so I did this also with, um, the particle system, I put some particles in and give them uh, uh, a gravity <coughs> so that they first were emitted uh, to the top and then falling down because they are cold and, and all this the steam will, will go down to the bottom. And you see here now the pouring phase and, you, and all the, the, the nitrogen goes into the um, cryolander and Another thing was then I wanted a slice of the 
of the sediment to show how the sediment core is frozen. Um, so I used a painting of, of a friend. He, he did, does paintings of, of uh, birds and, and how the feet are, uh, birds are fit in, 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 the, in the tidal flats. So this is a cross section as the organisms are in the, in the tidal flats. <coughs> and I put this then together, sliced um, all the, in the, 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 um, <coughs> the cryolander to, sh to show how the liquid nitrogen goes into the cryolander and how the sediment is frozen. And this was a little bit difficult to, to do this because I had then to prepare this little core here, which should change by the color. And uh, after the freezing process, this little core should be taken out from, from, from the surface. But initially, it should not be disting distinguishable uh, from, from the sediment itself. <coughs> Uh, you see here now the this, this slice through this, and this is the pouring and the freezing process, and this is why this metal <coughs> becomes blue here to demonstrate its, its uh, freezing. And also you see now here a little bit uh, that this sediment part where the <coughs> freezing starts from, from top to the bottom here uh, and changes its color a little bit. Okay, that's the pouring process. Now you see that it's frozen. See the sediment core, and then it can be taken out. Now it's taken out, and a little hole remains in the, in the sediment, and then it's uh, pushed out by this pusher, and it's wrapped in aluminum, and, and then put also in liquid nitrogen for, s for storage. So this is the whole the phases, and I have now the whole image, but I better show this, I think, the other program.
back here. Just need my last slide. Oh. Well, this is my, my conclusion for the end of the presentation. Uh, for if you do this and in your free time and, and for these little projects and you don't have so much time, I think it's really important um, that you cannot be perfect with the photorealistic images and this would take too much time. And I think Blender, because you can do all this without any ray tracing and, and save a lot of time in, in, in preparing this animation and, and uh, rendering time, <coughs> this is a big advantage. And also, with this Python connection, I think this is for scientific purposes very effective. And this is why I tried other um, software, also commercial software, some years ago, but I stick in fully, fully to, to Blender because I think it's so nice. So the next steps uh, for, for this project <coughs> of the ocean science will be more realistic underwater scenery, which I began already to integrate this and then make the video. This will be for the rest of this year, my, my, my free time work. And finally, I want to thank, thank the Blender community here for preparing such a beautiful software and, and improving this all the time so that we can profit from this. Thank you very much. <coughs>